Okay, so I'm going to start to work on the wing now that we've got the rudder servo mounted, the stab mounted, the, all the formers in the tail. Uh, so let's get the wing, wing going here. So there's many steps to the wing. This might be quite a bit of a long video. I'm going to get the wing root ribs ready. So these came in the kit. They do come taped onto each wing. They are not the same. There is a left and a right. Um, at least it sure looked like it to me. So <clears throat> I marked them left and right uh, just so that I don't mix them up. Um, so I'm going to use these and the fuselage to kind of mark where those uh, any rotation bolts or wing hold down bolts are going to go in. I'm not going to do the wing adjuster right at this time. First off, I don't have them yet. I'm waiting for them to come. Um, and second, it's not really important for this step. So we're going to go, we're going to get that marked on there. And we're going to get uh, the same holes in the, in the fuselage cut out uh, for those anti-rotation points. So there's a bunch of kind of prep work to do around that before we even think about starting to mount up the, the wings on the fuselage. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do to the fuse on both sides is that this side I've already taped up and I've drawn a center line through both the uh, recesses for the anti-rotation or the hold down bolt really. Arguably, you don't necessarily need wing adjusters if uh, this wing incidence works for you. So, you really could just use these uh, these hold down bolts as your as your center line and never bother with the wing adjuster. I'll probably put the adjuster in because that way it makes it easy to do setup at the field. <clears throat> so, I'm going to go ahead and remove both those. This is the hold down bolts that are included with the kit. Um, they're metric six. I believe they do have a little thumb screw, thumb nut included on there. Um, they are slightly, you know, they got a bit of a head on them on one side, and they do have a bit of a larger diameter at the base than where the threads are. And really, once we get these these holes in place here, we're going to use those to mark on our root rib where they go. And then effectively, these uh, these bolts are going to sit through the root rib like that. I'll probably add a bit of uh, extra material on the backside just to support them. They'll sit through like that, and then when the wing goes in, you know, we'll use the thumb screw on the inside of the of the fuse in order to in order to tighten them onto. Okay, so I've got those open up enough that you know these just nicely go through, not snug at all. So I'll go ahead and do the other side, and then I'll start marking the holes in the root on the root rib. Okay, so I've gotten both sides of the fuse uh, marked the tape, and I've got all the uh, retention holes opened up. Nice, uh, nice clean for my bolts. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to transfer those marks onto the rib so I know where to where they go. So in order to help me do this, I'm going to use my tube. And I'm going to just sort of set it in place right here. And then I'm going to tape the rib down to the fuse and I'm going to come back through and kind of mark it from the inside. Now I want to, you want to get this rib, remember the rib hole is slightly bigger than the tube because it has to fit over the socket, so you want to kind of centralize that hole around the, around the tube. I'm going to tape that in place. You also want to make sure the, you know, the rib's fairly close to being centered on that, on that wing uh, incidence line. Ultimately, this is going to kind of what's drive going to drive your your uh, how close you kind of get on incidents on your initial alignment. This will really you can always adjust it and tweak it later, but it just saves you a bunch of work down the road if you get this perfect right out right out of the gate. <clears throat> so we're going to do that. We're going to get a shorter pencil because this is a bit 
only have the width of the fuselage to sort of work with here. So we're going to go in here and I'm just going to mark off on this rib where this hole is. I'm going to do that for both the front and the back. And while I'm at it, I'm going to mark off the hole where the servo lead will go through. It's really that thing. So we take this off. And we're going to end up with two marks in our rib, rib, rib or those any rotation bolts we go. So that's where we're going to drill the holes through. So I'm going to go ahead and do the other side. Okay. Got my marks on both the root ribs, it's all done. So before I go ahead and drill those, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut a couple backing circles uh, at a quarter inch light ply that I'm gonna glue on the on the backs of these before I run the bolt through. The reason for that is really just to give it uh, an extra bit of surface area when I glue these root ribs into the into the foam, I'll recess the foam a bit and then those blocks will stick into the foam and they'll also glue into the foam. So it'll just give me a bit of extra surface area for that glue to stick to uh, on the root rib and just help to really support that that bolt nicely so nothing can come apart. Because if you happen to lose that root rib or it breaks off the root of the wing, uh, your wing is gonna, gonna go bye-bye. So I'm gonna cut those out of the quarter inch light ply here on the scroll saw and I'll drill up all the holes. So I'm gonna go ahead and drill these holes. Now I'm going to drill them first because it's much easier to drill uh, when you're holding a sheet of wood versus trying to cut these all out and then hold each small individual one. So we're going to drill all those first. I'm going to drill them all out to the same size. Now to get real accurate drilling, you know, I'm going to use a set of calipers. Measure that up. That's 309 thousandths of an inch. 310, somewhere in there. And then, you know, you want to set of numbered drill bits. That's really the, the way to go about it if you want to get super duper accurate. So I've got an actual chart here of all different sizes. So a, a letter set and a number set. So so 309 if we go to we can we can do our closest would be a 5 16 probably be at 0.3125 or if we want to go a little bit under and may, may open it up we could use a 302 which is an N drill bit. So if you have these letters and number size drill bits, you can you can basically drill just about anything you want. But I'm going to go ahead with the 5 16 It's got my bit in there, um, a nice backer board that you can drill into. So if you ever want to drill wood without getting um, the wood fraying on the other side, you need another piece of wood to drill into so the bit can go all the way through supported. If you just drill into an open hole, you're always going to have that wood break apart on the other side. So I'm going to first drill just a test hole. I want to double check to see how close this bit's actually going to be. So there you go. So when I drill it, see how it comes out nice and clean on the other side because we got a backer board on there. So we're going to test this fit, and that should be about as perfect as you can get right there. So what that'll look like. When we're done, it's going to be just a little bit of that larger diameter exposed there, and that'll get covered up by the by the root rib. But the size is is spot on the money. So I'm going to go ahead and drill out all those all those holes now. Okay, and there's all our holes drilled in the wood. So now I'm going to go ahead and the scroll saw and cut all these out. Yeah, there's the four parts, and we'll go clean them up and get ready to glue them all together. So before we glue anything, I just want to try to fit these kind of together. So what we got is we got our we got our retention bolt, we got our backing backing wood, and we got our root rib. So I've marked this as the inner side. So I want to take these, the little one, the big one. I want to take them and I want to 
just put these on here like they're going to go like they're attached to the wing. So I'm going to go ahead and take this one apart. I'm going to double check the other side and then I'm going to glue all these together uh, with medium CA and then that way they're ready to go. All right. <clears throat> I'm going to start getting the wings a bit more ready, so if you remember with the sockets, we left them um, with his end sticking out and we left, you know, the glue still, the fillet, the beads kind of still around there from the polyurethane. So we're going to go ahead now and I'm going to get rid of this and I'm going to start trimming this down to sort of the right, uh, right dimension to fit inside that root rib. Just because we can't have that sticking out obviously if we're going to do our alignment and we need to tidy it up in order to really really complete that step. So we're going to go ahead and do that right now. So to do that I just use um, that little roto zip, little roto zip bit. They're pretty good at those kind of end milling operations. Um, so I'm going to use that to clean that up just on low speed. They are a bit wild and crazy I find. Uh, so I don't like using them on too high a speed. But we're going to do that, clean that up. So before I get too carried away, I'm going to lighten these up a little bit, so I've drawn some marks on here. Um, I probably should have done this before I glued these on here, but I can still manage to get it done uh, the way it is. So I'm going to go to the scroll saw, do that up, and then uh, come back to the getting the root rib over top of the socket and finish and clean out those sockets. Okay, <clears throat> bit of work, but I got all the lightning holes in, so that's how I did them. I left fair bit of space in the front here for a wing adjuster um, for a wing adjuster socket I guess I don't have them yet um, but I'll probably put them in later so I figured you know just the location of the access points in the fuse the front would be a lot easier to access the back really on this plane because the canopy stops pretty far forward uh, for the T-can the top canalizer there really is no access point to get into that, into the back here for an adjuster somewhere without taking the T-can off. So this way, up front here, um, I'll be able to get at it a lot easier. <clears throat> so I'm going to go ahead now and start trying to fit these over the, over the sockets. So what I want to do is... I want to see basically how much of that socket I got to cut off in order to have this thing sit in flush. And you'll notice that, <clears throat> you know, it's a pretty tight fit in there. You probably got to do some uh, some adjustments um, potentially to kind of get this all the way in here. But I'm going to get it all the way in. I'm going to draw a line around there, and then I'm going to cut that off with my uh, little mini Dremel tool. So I've got my line marked. I don't know if you can easily see it in there just a very subtle pencil line I see it right about there so I'm going to go around and cut that off with my Dremel tool while I was in there I kind of pushed the uh, pushed the uh, uh, the wing the wing blocks that I glued on there into the foam bit to see if I could make a mark I'll probably do that a couple times just to try to indent the foam and I'll know where to kind of cut those out and recess them as well. Okay, so there's the first one cut off. Um, I'm going to take my little sanding bar here and just put it up. Sorry, I think that's pretty much got it there now. Nice, pretty flush to the root there. <clears throat> Just do a quick dry fit of that root rib. See what we come up with. It's sticking out still a little bit, just a hair. So I might just go sand that down a little bit more. Again, I'm going to try to push these in here just to see if I can get them to form a bit of a mark on that foam as to where where they're gonna sit so 
same as the front one. And you can kind of start to see a little bit of a mark on that foam. So that's how I know where I'm going to recess those things down in there. Okay, so to recess the foam, I'm going to use uh, this bit again. Except this time, what I'm going to do is just so I know how deep I want it, I'm going to take some tape and I'm just going to tape the end of it up just so I know how far we go. So I'm going to go just a hair past hair past the width of that because obviously the bolt head's got some width to it so you really want to be able to get the whole thing kind of captured off there so I'm just going to kind of mark it with my finger it doesn't have to be super accurate but and then just wrap that taper on there and that's that's basically how I know how far I'm going to dig that bit in there So the two holes, they don't have to be super perfect. I mean, we're gonna use polyurethane. It's just really to make the recess there so that uh, that we're gonna fill that with glue and that's gonna expand around everything and hold it in there nice and solid. So I've gone and I've put the root rib back in place um, and it fits It fits pretty good. It's a little bit, a little bit snug in spots. Um, so what you'll notice on this is there's just that, and it's maybe hard to see, but just an ever so slight extra bit of balsa on the root ribs pressed up against the foam. Now the foam is actually cut curved as well to match the fuse. So I'm not, at this point I'm not exactly sure how I want to do this. Do I want to attach the root rib to the fuse and then glue the wing onto the root rib or do I want to just glue the root rib onto the foam and maybe adjust the balsa. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to test fit this up on the fuse first. Um, and see kind of how it looks and then and, you know just as far as how accurate that is and then maybe make the decision so I got my fuse put up here and I'm just gonna throw this on I have not put the center section in yet I'll do that overnight Bolt holes line up pretty good. I'll put that on. Yeah, and as you can see, it's pretty good. I need to kind of prop it up with something here to hold it straight up. So it's pretty accurate, like right out of the gate. So what I'm probably going to do is, and I'll just show you that if I can. That, that's pretty close to the fuse. I mean, it's it's close enough that I think I can adjust the balsa. And to be honest, once you put a bit of foam on the root, uh, it'll, it'll make that all up. So I think probably what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and glue the, uh, glue the root rib right on the root of the foam first. And then I'll, I'll, uh, I'll join it up to the fuse and do the alignment after that way. Um, also, you can see just by the nature how we did this, how super accurate we are in our incidents. Basically, you know, if that incidence was correct on the fuse, um, and I didn't measure what it was, I have no clue what it's supposed to be. Um, we really would need adjusters if that was the if that's the correct spot because we're we're basically banging on the money. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and set this up to glue these root ribs in. Okay, so I went ahead and I've done both the same to both wings. So basically, I've cleaned up the tube, got these recesses in both ends, got um, the root ribs prepared so I did all, you know, all the lightning holes are done. I glued these in, make sure you glue them in from the right side where you got the, the extra bit of meat there. So I glued both those into both root ribs. Um, I trial fit everything a couple times just to make sure so I'm not too, uh, too concerned about that. So the next step is we're going to glue these root ribs onto the onto the uh, root root of the wings. So how do you do that exactly? So I'm going to use polyurethane glue. Basically, going to glue these down. 
and then I'm going to use some some wood blocks in here at a few different spots uh, that fits inside the sheeting and tape them down just to hold it in place because it is curved so you can't just use one bit of tape right you gotta have something that's sort of gonna push on it a few spots so I'm gonna go ahead and do that put my put my uh, polyurethane on move a fair bit in the in the holes there and then uh, just a normal amount everywhere else and shoot over some water and then find me some blocks and get it all ready to go okay on this. So to kind of get your stuff ready to go first, um, I've got a bunch of blocks here. These are actually from the kit. Um, the kit does have lots of little blocks for the capping and whatnot, so you can use those. Just make sure you don't lose them and put them back. Root ribs, popsicle sticks, some tape, um, glue, my water spritzer, a couple more blocks, and some paper towel just to clean things up. So I am going to start on the right panel. So it's this guy, make sure it goes the right way around. I'm going to put the put the polyurethane on the root rib first um, and then I'll go back on the wing and I'll, I'm going to do it in the, I'm going to kind of pour it in the holes there. So, that's basically how that's going to look. So you see we're basically pushed up against the back there. Pushed up against the root there. And everywhere else seems to be bonded down okay. It's not necessarily critical that it's exactly perfect. Like I say, there's a bit of overhang on the sheeting, so we can always slightly adjust that fit after the fact. Okay, we'll move on to the next wing. Okay, so the second wing panel, I did off camera, same thing. Uh, just root rib in there, all glued up, everything in place, and we're gonna leave that set up, all right? Took out the supports and the tape, and so that's what our root rib looks like now. So we got a bit overhang, a couple little spots where the polyurethane expanded which is good to see but basically it's you know these are nice and in there they're not going to move glued well a bit of flexibility we'll cut those off later once we get it figured out how deep they're going to sit in the in the fuse so so what's next <clears throat> but we're going to go ahead and put it all up and uh and the stab too and just double check the alignment Again on the wings, we're going to need to block up the root a bit just to make sure that spacing off the off the fuselage and the basically the distance from the the tip to the fuselage is, is the same on each side so that we can get an accurate sort of square measurement off of it. So I got my socket, I got my tube. Now I've put PVA on this tube already because we are going to glue the socket in. Um, in the in the fuse here, these holes have a bit of play on them, and I'm going to use that essentially to hopefully adjust the alignment if it needs to be. So it's just it's just ever so subtle up and down, left and right. So that way we can make sure everything's parallel and square, and then we'll glue the socket. Uh, we'll wrap it with glass and we'll glue it in place while everything's kind of bolted up. So a few things, same kind of as the stab. You know, I got the capping on the or the spacers on the wing already so just a quarter inch just to set them off both wings um, I have done the stab as well you can see it installed back there it is also I've got the spacers on it and it's it's kind of in position ready to go so really this this process is is identical to the stab in the sense that we're gonna set it in there make sure it's all square and then we're gonna basically set that socket in place even though we have these these holes are pretty accurately cut we're just gonna we're gonna use the socket to sort of finalize that position because once that socket's set at whatever whatever angle relative in there basically your tube is gonna be is gonna be banging on so first things first we're gonna slide the socket through or the tube through and put the socket in the middle
Now there is a gap um, between the socket and the and the fuse there. Maybe kind of see it. So we are going to put micro balloons in there to sort of make that gap up. So that's why we got the PVA on there. Now the PVA may get scraped off. Um, fortunately, the tube's probably pretty smooth, so it hopefully shouldn't shouldn't cause an issue. So I'm going to put the wings on now on each side, and I am going to screw them through the holes. So I'm going to put the wing block hold downs on here, and that's really just to make sure that wing, the spacers are flush on the fuselage, so I don't really want any gap in there, otherwise I otherwise the fuse might, might not be quite straight. Put some weight in your fuse to hold it down. So they're bolted up. Um, just so you see, we got no gap basically in between the, the shims and the fuse, front and back. That's kind of what I'm going for there. So it's more or less ready to start checking measurements. Um, I just want to make sure that I do have a bit of play in there still. That's uh, probably taken all up by the shims, but what we'll do is we'll shim these out a little bit if it's if it's off a bit. I'm just gonna use a measuring tape to go kind of tip to tip. millimeters on them. So this one is closer than that one. So I should be able to shim just ever so slightly. Um, basically there and there just to sort of offset that back. So I did shim some 16th inch balsa. One right there. And one on the other side there. So go ahead and tighten those back up and we'll double check that measurement again. Hopefully that's sufficient. To, uh, to get that get that on straight. So this is about a thousand ninety seven. So they were five millimeters apart before, so they should be about right now. It's now within about a millimeter of each other. So that's really, I'm not going to get any more accurate than that. That is super duper close. We can double check now from the tail post as well out to each tip. So this is 1240, give or take a millimeter. And this side is also. Basically 1241. So I'd say these are or within about a millimeter of the wing um, being square to the fuse end instead. Yeah, so this is actually yeah, this is this is probably 1241 as well. Actually I'd say we're almost perfect. So that's really all you need to do for the wing alignment. And having that bit of slop in that tube um, really makes things super super easy to do and then when we set the socket in there with the glass that's the position of it and when you put the wings back on it should be it should be right on the money so there's the position we're looking for i got it basically centered in behind the fuse and i'm really just looking for that trailing edge across the across the wing so it's super duper close that side could be ever so slightly lower than the left side and then I would just move up and down a little bit like this 
just to see. I'm probably not going to bother fixing that at this point. Um, I find that, you know, once you bolt the stab on and do up the adjusters and everything, it slightly shifts anyways. So this is so close, it's probably not even detectable in flight. Just back to the parallelism. So why that's important uh, is basically if you look at my little stick plane here, it is crooked. <laughs> so you can imagine if this was if you were flying and you pulled the elevator, you know that that tail is gonna go. It's gonna move down perpendicular to the to the angle of that stab. So when you pull that, it's gonna slightly in this in this model's case, it's gonna likely displace the model left. So that when you get vertical, a you're probably out of plane this way, but you're also off heading. So if you really struggle, and the way to check is on a calm day, you know, flying straight away from yourself, pull up, and that plane should go. Assuming your thrust and everything's correct, but that plane should go purely straight up with just elevator. And if it doesn't, you know, double check that that parallelism on the stab. Okay, so we're gonna set the socket in. Um, I'm not gonna keep repeating a lot of the same stuff, but uh, micro blue mixture, a little bit for the glass, same resin that I was using before. brush and a couple pieces of glass to to wrap that socket in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the micro balloons kind of in the corners first. Uh, just to fill that gap, there's just a, that hairy gap um, between the socket and the fuselage. So I'm just going to put a bit in there just to kind of fill that up and then cover it up with glass. So we're basically done. I've went back and double checked the measurements and I'm going to leave this sit here uh, for that glue to set up. I did, you can maybe see in the video, a little bit of tape there. So actually pulling up on that left hand wing tip just a hair, just to get that parallelism as perfect as I can get it. Um, you know, it doesn't take, this stuff doesn't take much. It's all already so close. So I'm just trying to put a little bit of force on that on that one uh, wing panel to push that tube kind of that way up in the you know just take a bit of that slack that we had um, in those holes in the fuse and then once that tube sets or the socket sets up uh, that position should stay pretty close so we'll leave this set up and then we'll come back and we'll we'll dismantle everything and uh, see how it looks and move on to the next steps